Hello guys, welcome to Tan Mixing Adventures. Lisa here and this afternoon I'm going to show you a little bit of something different. I am winging a recipe because we are having visitors for dinner and we are having roast meat and I had what I thought was roast out of the freezer and it ended up being something a little different. So come with me today as I show you how I adapt this and do something for the very first time which is roll my own meat. So come along, let's do this. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to put some garlic into the Thermomix and blitz it down. So I'm not using a cookie dough recipe today because you don't have to all the time. And once you're confident with your Thermomix, you can literally just chuck in a garlic clove and mill it down, right? Grate it down. No more using a grater when you've got a Thermomix on the bench. All right. So that's one of the things I do not miss about, you know, before I had a Thermomix was grating. You don't need to with a Thermomix. You can actually chuck this in. The other thing Hubby and I used to do before Thermomix is we used to use a garlic press. And, you know, you're not allowed to put them through the dishwasher traditionally because otherwise they go, I don't know, they're not corroded, but they go white and they get this gray film on them. So we used to leave it on the kitchen sink and kind of have this standoff about who was actually going to wash up the garlic press. Okay, so Thermomix three seconds, speed seven, and it will be done. So I'm gonna click on my speed and my timer. I'm gonna put just three seconds on it. Now I can touch my screen if I like. However, did you know, TM6 owners, this is a tip for you today, a hot tip. Push the silver button twice, and I'm pushing the selector, there's once, there's twice, and it scrolls through your options when you're manually making things, okay? So that's pretty cool to start off with. So we're gonna go up now to speed seven because that is our chopping for onion and garlic. You'll see I didn't quite get there. Uh, I got to six and a half and I stopped, but it doesn't particularly matter. Okay, so hello, Anna. I'm so glad that you've been able to catch me live. Um, I am trying to do more live videos the next few weeks. Otherwise, the YouTube is there for the longer videos. The what, what I say longer, they're not longer videos. It's actually longer recipes where you might have a really big cook time in it. And, you know, on a Facebook Live, I can't wait 20 minutes while it cooks and, you know, dance and sing. So that's what I use the YouTube for. So do always check out the YouTube channel as well. That Facebook is great for showing up like this where I can show you something quick and simple like making a marinade for your roast. All right. So let's have a look at that garlic clove. And it is, okay. Do say hi if you're watching on. I do love to see who's watching on. And I love to know that you are enjoying the videos and the lives and that you're, I guess, getting more out of your Thermomix because there is so much you can do, so, so much. Uh, even if it's making a marinade or a dressing um, or making a salad or steaming or, you know, they're probably preaching to the converted. So I won't keep going. Next thing I'm gonna chuck in is some fresh herbs from the garden. I've got some thyme, rosemary and parsley and I'm gonna just chop those down, okay. I am literally winging this. I'm a little nervous because I am not normally a very good winger. <laughs> but what happens when you get, I'll just show you the meat. Can you, oh, is the camera gonna behave? Look, you can see the meat there. I literally thought I was getting it out into my roasting tray as a big chunk of meat, but it's pulverized meat ready to go. And I was like, oh, it's not really barbecue weather here at the moment. Uh, summer may have started today, officially, but it's like 17 degrees here. It's terrible. It's so cold. Hence the jumper. Okay. Let's chop this down again. This time I'll do it different. This time I'm going to just actually not put a timer on. <coughs> I ate a cracker before I got online. Bad idea. Um, but I can highly recommend <coughs> the crunchy rice crackers on cookie dew. That's what I ate beforehand. And I said to the kids, go continue, but save me some. Shouldn't have eaten that one. All right. Speed seven, three seconds, but I'm not gonna put a timer on this time. So I'm just gonna listen. <laughs> Listening for the sound of it being consistent. That was a bit longer than three seconds because I was waiting for a consistent sound like it's all the same size in there. That's what I'm listening for. Let's have a look at that. That looks beautiful in there. <coughs> I really shouldn't have done that cracker. Anyway, and I can feel it all in my teeth too. Anyway, it's to go with the beautiful beetroot dip. If you've not yet tried the parmesan and beetroot dip of cookie dough with the beautiful uh, lavish bread next to it, it's a lavish is a flat bread. I can't, I, I think the official name is like beetroot and parmesan dip. I think it's called, but it's amazing. Okay, we, we roast our cats, our, uh, what are they called? Um, oh, 
the nuts, cashews. Most of the time we roast them, but sometimes we just chuck it in. And it is just amazing. We just use tinned beetroot, unless we've got our own pickled stuff at the time, but we don't have any at the moment. So quick, like five seconds to make an amazing dip. And then we made the crackers to go with it as well. But actually, more so my son did. All right, herbs chopped. One, I'm gonna put one generous scoop of Dijon mustard because you know beef and Dijon mustard, amazing. And then I'm gonna put into it. Now, by the way, this is getting cooked in the oven. Okay, I'm not steaming it. Um, that would just be different. I think you could, and then you could sear it at the end. But I, you know, I thought I was doing a roast. We have potatoes abundantly at the moment. We have sweet potatoes. We're growing, growing. We've got squash. And there's only so many things you can do with squash, okay? Now, I'm talking for those of you who are not in Australia, because I know a lot of you guys watch on from around the world. I'm not talking about what you might know as uh, zucchinis or pumpkin-style things. I'm talking about little squash, all right? They're like a little spaceship-looking yellow thing. Um, and you can use them in the place of zucchinis, but we also have zucchinis as well. So at the moment, we've been doing lots of roast veggies, uh, lots of little side salads as well, lots of coleslaws and broccoli salads and beetroot salads, and then a protein typically to go with it as well. Hence the reason for this. So I put probably, probably not enough, but a, a bit of oil in there as well. On with that lid, and we're just gonna mix it. Now I should scrape down the sides first. This is not the best spatula to do it. This is my spatula that's had its hair cut off the end because um, because so many people in my house cook with my Thermomix, not everybody scrapes the same way around the bowl. Now it is highly recommended you scrape around in a clockwise manner. What that does is it follows the blades behind and you don't take nicks out of your spatulas, okay? Because you're following from behind. Um, you know, I've got six-year-old, eight-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old all cooking. So sometimes the cake batter goes, you know, gets scraped out the other way and we end up with bits of our spatula broken. So and eventually I get annoyed with it hanging off the end in bits and I give it a haircut off the end and I end up with a short spatula that's not so flexy. So we're just gonna mix this through. So we're gonna go up to speed three because that's a mixing speed. And then, oh, it doesn't take long. I forgot I hadn't put the timer on. That's what happens when you do guided cooking all the time. And now we're gonna put it in here. Well, actually, I'm gonna slather it on top of all of these really thinly if I've got enough of it. And then I'm gonna roll these up. I've got some string to tie it and some scissors. But I just wanna tell you guys, I didn't manage to get online last night while I'm multitasking here uh, because I was actually returning from celebrating one of the ladies in my team uh, reached a massive milestone in Thermomix world. So I am in a really fortunate um, position that I get to work alongside some absolutely amazing consultants. And I've uh, been a team leader now for five years. This amazing consultant has been in our business for 13 years and uh, sold over now 1,000 Thermomixes. So we were celebrating her 1,000th uh, plus sales uh, yesterday. And um, just amazing and you know what it just made me grateful and thankful for this business and the freedom it brings people but it also um i guess made me want to put more of a spotlight on the amazing consultants that are out there all right so you know yes i'm a consultant yes i'm a team leader and i'm so grateful for those of you who have partnered with me and supported me and you know you pick me on the mix shop and you refer your friends and thank you so much uh, and you know, those of you out there, I know there's some of you guys as well who watch on and you support other consultants. And we are so, so, so grateful for that support because we literally wouldn't exist if it wasn't for your support. Uh, many of you know these days, anyone can jump onto the Thermomix in Australia website, buy a Thermomix and not pick a consultant. Now they get like the Thermomix, they get, if there's a gift, they get that still. They don't get a consultant and nor does a consultant get paid the same. So a small business doesn't get an income. A mum on maternity leave doesn't get, you know, money for Christmas presents and things like that. And that's the difference you guys and your support make to consultants all over Australia. Now, I can't speak, those of you or who are overseas, I can't speak for other businesses elsewhere. But in Australia, we are so, 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 so grateful uh, for those of you who have uh, reached out, who have supported us, who let your friends and family know not to go elsewhere. You know, not to just, when I say go elsewhere, not to just check out without adding a consultant name, you know, because the thing is, it's going to cost them exactly the same, but they're like, then they're not going to get the support. They're not going to get the same level of support. You know, so many of you reach out to me and go, hey, Lisa, help, I've got this, or oh my gosh, I made this and I never thought I would. 
And that's the difference of buying with a consultant support. I used to call myself the personal trainer for your Thermomix because if you fall off the wagon and you stop using it, you literally reach out and go, Lisa, help, you know, and I still am, okay? I'm still happy to do that regardless. I just don't say that much very often that I'm your PT. So, hey, Tracy, lovely to have you on today. But yeah, but thank you to those of you, you know, we wouldn't have uh, businesses if it wasn't thanks to you and your backing and your support. And um, yeah, so thank you. That's that, that. But it was such an honor as well to uh, go celebrate 1,000 sales. So do check out, you know, go out there and, and Google search and look what a lot of people do, like consultants do, because everybody's got their own little way of doing things that are different and that have their own hints and tips. And some people you'll be like, meh, this is great. This is good. And then some you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Okay, so I want you to get the very most out of your Thermomix or whatever you've got that you're cooking with, thermo cooker or some version, okay? Because it truly, it truly will change your kitchen. Um, so yes, anyway, I said I was gonna do that while I layer this on and show you guys what it looks like to roll meat that I have never done in my life. So let's do that. And this is the beauty of Thermomixing. I'm, I make things these days that there is no way that I would ever consider doing without a Thermomix. Like I just, not that I'm following a recipe today, I'm completely winging it and really not looking forward to touching the meat in a minute. But anyway, the things I do for you guys. In the new year, by the way, uh, cook-alongs are back. So I've been thinking about how to best support you guys in the new year, and this year I haven't done any cook-alongs. Whereas in uh, the two years prior with COVID and everything, we did a cook-along every month. And so 2023, we are doing cook-alongs at the end of every month. The last weekend of every month, there will be cook-alongs. You'll find that information, not yet, hold tight. <laughs> I'm not all that organized yet, but you'll find that information on my website as it comes out. Uh, and that will be an opportunity for you to learn more about your Thermomix. Try recipes that might seem like they're a little, um, you know, daunting at times, you know, a bit like the, the, the other day's live where I said about the barbecue chicken. You know, if I hadn't looked at that in a cookbook, I wouldn't have tried it. It looked like it was going to be too long of a recipe. But then break it down by guided cooking step by step. I can do it. And you can too. Uh, so I hope to do more than just inspire you with recipes, but uh, give you the skills as well. You know, pastry handling and all sorts of different things. So that's coming back in 2023. And I'm super excited about that as well. So, all right, let me roll this up. The time has come. So these, as I said, these are, and I think they're round beef, I think. And I actually, I thought it was a roast. Um, I have just given that a spread of it as if it was like, I'm going to say peanut butter on toast. Uh, but now I've got some kitchen twine from very many long years ago. You know how you've got those things in the drawer that you use once and you've never used again? I think I wrapped up chicken with it for a cooking class about six years ago, all right? So we're going to now roll this up. I don't think it particularly matters which way. They have um, tenderized it for me. Uh, I, I didn't even notice in the cry backed bag because it was all stacked on top of each other. So I thought it was just a quite of a flattish roast. But anyway, so they have tenderized it. Um, so really there's only two options to cook it. It's either fry it off on a barbecue. I suppose I could use it in something like a stroganoff or roast it but I since I was already going with mentally we were roasting we're going to do that so all I'm doing is these are two separate bits I'll just get them out the way and I'm just rolling it up okay you can see try and keep actually I'm going to reverse that one because you can see this end's got kind of a split in it so if I can put the split on the inside then that is amazing now um I am going to give a go at using my meter so if you haven't got a meter plus and you're not a confident meat cooking person like me, um, I love it. Okay, you stab it in your meat. That sounds really amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> but it then tells you, oops, sorry guys, it tells you how long you've got left to cook and how long you need to rest and that it's dead, which is what I like about it. I like my meat, you know, the assurance that my meat is, is good. So just going to spread around this one now I'm going to I am going to tie it up as much as I just forgot that I was actually going to tie it up I'll just get this one out the way so rolling it up now I am no butcher delicatician whatever it is that ties beautiful uh, things so I have a length of rope I just guessed and I am going to start at one end and I'm not trying to strangle it so I'm not going to go too tight however I am going to do like a double shoelace at this end. 
I don't know if this is right, okay? But that's what I'm gonna do. I don't even knit, okay? So, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna go around at about, I don't know, one inch, which is about two and a half centimeters. And I don't think I've cut enough to do this, but anyway, and then see how I've done this here on top. I'm gonna actually tuck this under so that it pulls, well, it doesn't really pull, but it holds it where it is. Can you see that? And I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna run out of string because I really, as I said, <laughs> not an expert here in this area, but I hope it gives you the confidence that if I can do it, and I've never done it before, uh, that you can do it too. So, except for the fact that I now have gross hands and number one, I can't finish the live video and touch the mouse button, but number two, I don't have a sink here to wash them in. What I would do is I would, um, I'm gonna tie on another bit, like just an extension to this and then go round and finish it off, okay? So that's what I will do off camera later because uh, I don't wanna use the scissors and touch the string again without washing my hands. But that's how you tie it to then keep it rolled up so that as it roasts, it, it stays together. Okay, so like that with the little latch through. So I hope you kind of saw how that is. So that's it for me this afternoon. Um, do let your friends and family know about the $29 bowl offer. It is only on for a little bit longer. All right. So please make sure if they've ever showed an interest or maybe you've fed them your Thermomix food before and they've been like, oh, what's a Thermomix? Then, um, you know, talk to them about it because it will change their kitchen. It's changed your kitchen. Um, and there's just so much it can do. So if I can help in any way, please do just let me know. Um, you'll see a few things coming out from my website in the coming uh, days and weeks. I've got some Christmas resources to share um, and just some news to get out, get everything uh, underway for next year. You'll keep an eye out as well there on my newsletter for registrations for the cook-alongs and the dates. So you can put them in your diary and have them sorted because I know as well that once January comes, uh, life just gets busy again, doesn't it? So otherwise, thanks for joining me today. Um, have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you're staying warm and not wet like we are here. And I'll see you tomorrow for some more cooking from my kitchen. If there's anything I can do, if you've got questions, if there's anything you want me to show you, let me know because I'm more than happy to jump online and do these lives if there's something particular that you feel you'd like um, to see more of. But otherwise, guys, take care and I will see you tomorrow. So bye for now. And now I figure out how to touch the mouse. I'm going to have to disinfect it. See you guys.